Hi, I am Inder Nana. I'm a technology specialist for data analytics in the healthcare vertical working for Microsoft. I, along with a colleague of mine, Greg Momont, we have created this GitHub repository to demonstrate Microsoft Fabric abilities using real world healthcare data set from CMS with 220 plus million rows. Uh, Microsoft Fabric is a relatively new product which gives you all the capabilities needed for building data analytics solutions. Uh, the repository shares step-by-step -step instructions as well as videos to help you build out this architecture in your own environment for learning purpose or demonstration purpose. Um, the focus of this video is to demonstrate Copilot capabilities built into Microsoft Fabric. If you're not aware, Copilot is the term used by Microsoft for AI assistance, um, where you ask for help using natural language and it provides human-like responses um, relevant to achieving your task. Microsoft is building Copilot into all of its products, including PowerPoint, Words, Teams, etc. Um, and Microsoft Fabric is no different. Uh, in fact, Fabric has three different kinds of Copilots. The first one is for data engineering and data science, which can help you generate code for Spark. Um, and that's what I'll be showcasing shortly in this video. Uh, besides that, there is a Copilot for Data Factory as well as Power BI for report generation. Um, just a disclaimer before we get started that Copilots are in preview. Uh, you might not get exact same results as I did. I had to do some experimentations uh, to get the desired results, and I will share those details. Um, uh, technology might not be perfect, but Copilot capabilities have a potential of transformational change in how we work, and uh, I do believe every Copilot co capabilities are going to be um, very valuable. Okay, coming back to the architecture, we have the Spark node as the as the the first step where uh, uh, we convert the CSV files to um, a Delta Parquet table, and that's that's the that's the step I would like to showcase how can be achieved using Copilot capabilities. So let's uh, let's get started over here. Um, the first thing I want to show you is the notebook um, which I implemented few uh, months back um, without the Copilot capabilities. Um, we have a list of files. Um, we are just looping through those files and doing some basic transformations here um, like data type conversion for certain columns um, and then we are concatenating few columns to create new columns um, also we are creating an year column we had separate files for each year and the year name was embedded in the file name like this like dy13 meant it's 2013 dy14 meant 2014 so i just kind of created a dictionary with those keys and those are the keys which are used to um, um create the data frame object here in python um, after that once uh, once i have that data frame loaded and, and transformations there i just uh, write it out um, to a delta parquet table um, it has about 223 million rows uh, so that was the that was the, that's the first step um, so now let's see how we can uh, use Copilot to achieve similar results. Um, so I have my lake house over here. I have the files over here, uh, the CSV files. And what I would do is I would well, just create a new notebook here. And then uh, I will just click this Copilot button available and I'll say get started. And this does add this code snippet and uh, to in, and I need to run this code cell to um, enable Copilot capabilities. And this is more of a, a preview uh, time thing. It, I think it's going, going to change and the experience is going to change uh, in some time. So let's get started with the first task. The first act, task we want to accomplish is um, just read files, the CSV files um, from the CMS drug prescriptions um, uh, folder and uh, uh, into a data frame that's that's all we want to do uh, and we just want to display the 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 red files as well um, so i will make this right panel a little bit bigger which is the copilot window and here are my instructions so when you ask copilot for uh, for uh, for help uh, you share it instructions and it responds back in that in this case it will be responding back with the uh, Python code uh, for Spark. It takes a few minutes to run this step, so I'll be explaining few more details here. 
so this text I have is generate code. It's just telling generate code to load PySpark data frame from this folder. And I have given very clear instructions here that use Spark session, session which is already available using Spark variable. If I don't put it, it, it generates code which works, but it doesn't look as clean. So um, that's why I, you know, with experimentation, I came up with that instruction. Um, use relative file path has given. This is more of an environment specific concern. You will not need it. Um, then the next instruction is add column for year integer data type by inferring the year from the data file name. So uh, this is one tweak I had to do because if you recall, if we go back to the original notebook, the file names were somewhat complicated and I could not make Copilot generate a code which could decipher the year out of this uh, naming convention. So I just made things a little bit easy for it. I, I gave names like data underscore and the year as a suffix and it was able to uh, infer the year uh, with that simplistic name. Um, and then I have instructions to print the schema, uh, show data frame using display function. Uh, Fabric Spark has this uh, display function built in, which makes the table visual look a little bit better. Otherwise, if I don't give it, it just uses a different method, uh, which still works, but it doesn't uh, um, um, look as pretty. Um, the last statement is add import statements for any needed functions. So uh, my cell is over here complete. There are, there, there are multiple ways to um, invoke Copilot, right? So I, I have this instruction over here. I can just click this thing uh, and now I should get the code, but I could also use this percentage percentage chat or percentage percentage code um, magic uh, commands. Um, it within the code cell. My preference is more to use on this side panel, so I will not be using. So let's uh, see uh, what kind of code we get. All right, so I have a little handy copy code icon here. I'll copy it, copy the code, which looks pretty good. It has import statement, it has the file path, and it's just reading the CSV files. And then it also generated this uh, piece of code snippet to figure out the year column. Um, so I'll just run this. Uh, other thing to note is it does call out attention. This is an AI generated code. It can have errors, so review the code. So this is um, the current state of industry is it, AI technologies are still new, so having a human review uh, is important. Um, human in the loop, um, that's the, the term being used these days. Um, in this case, uh, the code was flawless and it ran successfully. Uh, let's move on to the next step. Uh, I'll get my prompt here and here is my second prompt uh, at this point what i want to do is if you if you look at the um, the red files all the fields are string type except integer uh, except the year which is the um, which is the column we added uh, as per the instructions um, but any of the columns from the data files are come out as string uh, we need to convert them so that's where the instructions are that convert it to a decimal type uh, with 10 max digits and two digits after decimal and similar you know import statements need to be added print schema and then display the data frame so let's click this um, so minor tweaks um, just like the file name changes and then a uh, few instructions like add import statements um, so this is all part of uh, prompt engineering um, how you ask questions to co-pilots or generative ai um, matters um, because uh, depending upon how you asked dictates how good of results you're going to get. It's completely new field. Um, the prompt engineering term did not exist. The field didn't exist. So there's a lot of uh, research happening in that area. Um, so this was going through this exercise was a good experience for me to uh, figure out how to ask the instructions to get the how to ask the co-pilot to um, get the desired code here. Um, so this code also looks pretty good. It's converting uh, four columns uh, from um, string type to the decimal type. So all good. Um, if we look, so our columns are converted to decimal type. So this is was the intent and it, it's good. It's all working good so far. Let's move on to the next step. And the next step is to convert a bunch of these columns from string type to long type. So very similar set of instructions. I gave the list of columns which need to be converted to long type and then my generic instructions of import statements and display function. Let's click it. All 
All right. Um, another thing to point out is it does give some little suggestions as well what you might want to do. Uh, right now we are not doing that, <laughs> but it does give suggestions. So this code also looks pretty good. I will copy and paste it here into the cell, run it. So far, so good. Um, I have the columns created here uh, with the long type. Let's move on to the next step. And the next step is to generate new columns based on existing columns. So here also I gave a simple instruction that generate code to add columns to Spark data frame by combining existing columns as instructed below. Um, add column prescriber city state by combining prescriber city and prescriber state abbreviation columns. Uh, separated by a comma and a space. Um, and the other one is prescriber full name. So you do still need some level of understanding of the coding. So it's uh, so I, I think this is going to be uh, very valuable, especially if you are new um, trying to upskill on Python and Spark coding. So this code also looks good. I'll create my new cell here. Paste the code. Let's run it. All right, so it was pretty fast. If I just scroll to the right, if I see prescriber city state column, um, it looks good. City comma space and the state name. So this is all good. And then the last step is to get the Python code um, to just save uh, the data frame as a table. This also looks good. I'll run it. It takes about five minutes to run this code, so I'm not going to wait um, um, on the video here. Um, but I have validated the results match with the um, with the tables generated using generated using the code I implemented, the notebook I implemented uh, with this uh, copilot generated. Um, I hope uh, this uh, walkthrough was valuable. Um, I will make sure to check in this uh, prompts or the instructions into the GitHub repository as well, um, because I'm positive that you should be able to use the same set of instructions for your own data sets as well. Thanks, I will stop the recording. Thanks, bye.